the, the most amazing part was the Qs still held that 274. We talked about this last night in the video. So the fact that we held the 274 and today's rally confirmed by uh, Trump being released a little bit later in the, in the evening, uh, reclaimed the five-day moving average. And now we are back to where we were prior to uh, Trump notifying the world uh, that he was uh, COVID positive. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another uh, edition of the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Uh, and just like that, Nothing ever happened. Uh, so cr crazy market. Um, I, I think everybody could could really uh, take a deep breath now. Okay. Um, apparently, COVID for every human being on the planet is in and in on Friday, out by Monday. Everything is all good. We wish to God that was uh, the case. Unfortunately, for the masses, the 99.9% .9 of the people uh, in the United States, it doesn't work that way. Uh, fortunate enough, the president. Uh, had some, you know, look, look like touch and go there for a while throughout the weekend, got better, better and better. And then next thing we know, uh, he made an announcement or the physicians made an announcement that he's actually uh, going home today or at least uh, being discharged from the hospital, which is great. Again, again, if you if you believe in the human spirit and everybody's cheering for each other uh, to be on this earth as long as possible, this is definitely uh, a good day. And the market's you know, pretty embrace that. And I, I think the only question over the weekend, as we talked about in the video, was, you know, how are the futures going to react? And again, headline driven was obviously the case. Uh, we didn't know what to expect over the weekend, especially uh, Sunday night into Monday morning. Uh, it looked like you know, Trump was getting a little bit better and better as the headlines were coming aboard. And obviously, uh, today, running up into that announcement, I think it was around 2.30, 3 o'clock, that he was actually going to be discharged. The bull started running. And, and again, that basically confirms all the price action that we saw uh, leading up to uh, Friday's session. Okay, Bulls, again, did a great job. And even with that sell-off, and again, the word sell-off is, is, is very subjective, but even with that day of red bias, okay, I think we could say it that way, um, the, the most amazing part was the Qs still held that 274. We talked about this last night in the video. So the fact that we held the 274 and today's rally confirmed by uh, Trump being released a little bit later in the, in the evening, uh, reclaimed the five-day moving average. And now we are back to where we were prior to uh, Trump notifying the world uh, that he was uh, COVID positive. But unfortunately, uh, everybody who is associated with Trump on a day-to-day -day basis uh, outside of the, the vice president, um, a lot of a lot of people around him, officials, uh, senators, whatever the cabinet members, uh, a lot of people got it. Okay, so uh, they hopefully they'll have a speedy recovery uh, as well. But ultimately, the market really liked the news. Um, stocks rallied, closed up their highs, and all those charts that looked so good on Friday, right? We talked about how Amazon looked so good on Thursday into Friday session. All of a sudden, they're good again, right? If you look at Amazon, if you look at Facebook, if you look at Apple, right? It's almost like Thursday, excuse me, Friday never happened. And now we are starting to look back at the top of the ranges from Wednesday's, from, excuse me, from Thursday's uh, session. So bullish environment, again, bullish environment, unless something incredibly materialistically happens on a day-to-day -day basis until we start confirming down levels below the five-day moving average, uh, whether it's on the Qs, whether it's on uh, the S&P. Um, I think, again, you have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. And if you saw the price action today, even leading up to kind of the uh, the progress report for Trump continuation to either stay in the hospital being or being released, you saw how aggressive they were buying names. Again, uh, Apple was very strong all day. Netflix was very strong all day. NVIDIA just continues to be an absolute monster. And uh, again, unless you really follow the semiconductor names and trade beta, a lot of people have never heard of NVIDIA, even to this day. And the most amazing part of it is this is one of the hottest stocks, period. I mean, this is including uh, the Teslas of the world. This is in, you know, including uh, the Amazons in the world, just an absolute beast. And every single day, 
when it when it starts building above levels. I mean, this thing is putting in Tesla S type of candle. So there's a lot of strength uh, going into tomorrow's session. Again, what can der you know derail a possible continuation move and testing Thursday's prices? Again, stimulus news. Uh, more COVID news again uh, for all you guys who live in the tri-state area. Um, I believe starting tomorrow, I think uh, Mayor de Blasio of New York and I think even Governor Cuomo confirmed they're closing down like 100 public schools uh, around the city. And again, that's not a good thing. OK, it's obviously not a good thing. Um, and I think, again, COVID could obviously spread like wildfire. We know this, unfortunately, again, for the majority of us, okay, we don't have that type of white glove, all hands on deck to save the president type of, uh, care or else this COVID thing wouldn't be a big deal. So, um, I think the COVID is out there, the stimulus deal, uh, again, off and on, on and off again, every single day we're hearing the headlines. Well, we haven't got a deal done, but we're still in the middle of negotiating. Okay. Enough, enough of the whole, uh, you know, another whole, the whole, uh, minute by minute update. Again, the world is sick and tired of the labor pains. Just show us the baby. Okay. We're either going to get a stimulus bill or not again, get a stimulus bill. Again, I don't want to hear about it every 30 seconds, how we're getting closer. Okay. Just get, get it done, right? Get it done and stop, you know, uh, and stop uh, exposing the market after two o'clock to every single headline. And again, if you guys have paid attention, especially over the last couple of weeks, that headline, that two o'clock headline, it comes across like like clockwork every single day. There's either some bad news or some good news comes out at two o'clock every single day. And, and if you are not careful, you're going to get completely removed for your capital. And again, the, the afternoon session, uh, for the most part, for no, no matter how long I've been trading, it's been kind of like a dead zone. And today we saw really uh, very, very contracting channels until that Trump headline uh, came that he was going home. And again, I think that's the formula to um, kind of navigate this tape until Election Day. Again, get aggressive against a broken record, but get aggressive in the first three, four hours of the day. Uh, if you have to trade, only sacrifice about five, 10 percent of your day in the afternoon. Uh, or again, the greatest thing you could possibly do is just not trade in the afternoon and save your bullets for the morning. That's when you know uh, the chases are out. The inexperienced money is out. Uh, the most exaggerated candles are out, and that's where you can take advantage of the novice side of your trade. So a uh, very good uh, session today, aggressive channels. Again, uh, bulls were, were marching right off the word go. Uh, a lot of channels were being taken pretty easy, pretty aggressive. Uh, the COVID names were a little bit mixed. Uh, you had Docu that was very, very strong. Uh, ZM uh, was was weak pretty much all day, and they kind of found the bid with that headlines of the of the schools being closed in New York City. But all in all, the most important part going into tomorrow's session is how close we are uh, to reclaiming uh, macro levels from Thursday's session before uh, the Trump thing, uh, the, before the Trump headlines of Corona ever happened. And that is bullish, and that's kind of what we want to see tomorrow. So if we can get uh, any light dip in the futures tomorrow, or have maybe a flat open, you know, that would be a really great gift. Because again, I'm going home flat uh, and I want to make sure the channels are there. They're, they're, they're being confirmed organically. So if the market guys, again, if you guys are listening, please give us a light volume open to the downside or flat is fine uh, as well. So let's talk about quickly uh, the pivots for uh, from today. Um, and, and again, uh, we, we had some pretty good names today. Um, I think a lot of names did, did pretty well. Uh, so let's talk about them, right? So Space uh, 21, and, and, and here, was, here was the most ironic part about Space. I've been watching this $21 on Space level now for about several weeks. And again, we've been talking about this uh, various times on the nightly update. Uh, we've been seeing some pretty big call buying coming in. And unfortunately, today it opened up above $21. And I was waiting for kind of an opening range. So we took the opening range here. Um, I didn't put the natural pivot because, again, it didn't confirm here. So for all you guys who are on the pivot feed. Again, you guys don't hear, uh, you guys don't have the opportunity to hear, you know, me talk literally seven hours a day. So there's opening range plays sometimes that we take that are not macro level. So unless you're getting that verbal guidance in the live webinar, I don't want to expose you to those trades because again, you won't understand why. Uh, but there was an opening range trade on space. Uh, we caught a little bit of it. 
uh, broke even on the balance. The only good thing, I still like the space for tomorrow. The only good thing I like about spaces, this is the first close, and I'll show you in a second. Uh, this is the first close in this whole formation that had finally closed above $21. Again, 2101. Again, nothing to write home about, but at least this is the first time we closed above. And if again, if you look at what happened on the NASDAQ 100, first time we closed above supply, it started building and then obviously shot up. So I kind of definitely want to watch uh, space for tomorrow uh, above this whole channel here. But again, nothing uh, to do there macro today. Uh, 2320 needs to build. Had an initial push to like 2340. Uh, never gave a second entry. Uh, NO NNOX was huge. Congratulations for all you guys who caught this. Uh, 3875, 39 needs to build for more upside. Uh, here was NNOX. Okay, so here was the 3875, this whole area here. Uh, 3875, 39, the stock went absolutely nuts, went to 45 bucks. Uh, big, big move again, confirming uh, Friday's action. Uh, XPEV, if you guys remember XPEV, we talked about last week. I didn't realize they had anything to do with, with uh, deliveries or anything, but they came out of PR, pretty good delivery today. Uh, 990, uh, 1990, 20 needs to build uh, on the delivery, pol uh, delivery PR. So here was uh, XPEV, right? Here was the 19, where was it? Here is it here, 19, 19, $20 level. Again, not a big move, went to the 20, 40 area, but again, uh, stock was already up $1.30. But again, not every single trade needs to be uh, $12. We like it, but we don't, you know, but we don't unfortunately get it. Uh, ZM had an initial move, and again, this is my comments, 491 needs to build for cash flow spike only. Again, when you're, when you're getting big moves and you're involved with almost like the opposite, almost like an ETF, a Trump opposite ETF, Zoom is going to be only as good as the headline. So here was Zoom. Uh, here's the 491 right here. 491 uh, went to 496. It was a very, very fast move. I personally missed it, um, which is unfortunate because it went from this whole channel here. And this is what we always talk about, sneaky pivots. Uh, it went from 491 to 496. Unfortunately, it was just way too fast for me. Uh, and I missed the whole trade, a $5 move, but again, it is what it is. Uh, ZM Roku 204 needs to build. Again, I didn't like the volume. It only went up about a buck. Uh, really didn't do anything. Um, crowd, uh, 145.75, 146 needs to build. Upgraded by Goldman. Uh, here was crowd. It took out the previous channel high, which was last week, and traded right to supply of 48 and change. Uh, Docu was big. Uh, Docu was a big move. Uh, got upgraded also today. Uh, 227.50. That was pretty much last week's highs. Uh, 228 needs to build for more. At some point, we were watching, um, you know, 235, 240 calls co coming in. Very, very aggressive. This whole channel here, uh, 227, you know, it's 50, 228, just really exploded. Uh, went all the way up to 236. So I'm pretty much on one candle. Um, you know, and again, I kept on reminding everybody, look, this is a very fluid market. It changes on the dime. It's headline, you know, really aggressively driven. That means a lot of erotic volatility. Make sure to wait for value. Second entries on everything. Keep cash flow. Take cash flow and use break even on stops. And again, I always say this. If you, if you must trade, right, if you absolutely gun to head must trade in the afternoons, please use a third or quarter size. Again, the value is just not the same. Uh, in the afternoon as in the morning. Uh, NVIDIA, again, again, what are you going to say about the stock? Just a monster. Uh, 532 needs to build. As you can see here, 535 on deck. This was just the beginning of the push. Uh, NV NVIDIA just went nuts. All right. So here is the whole channel right here. And why it was also important, not only did it confirm the 60-minute supply, if you look at the daily chart, right, it reclaimed the five-day moving average. Again, if you're joining us for the first time, that five-day moving average uh, represents the absolute shortest term of sentiment. And so not only did it confirm uh, the 60 minute, it confirmed the daily and just exploded, just absolutely went nuts uh, to the 545. Uh, note, a very, very aggressive repeat buyers almost on loop the whole day, pretty much the whole day of the 550 uh, weekly call. So the video looks higher uh, as well. Uh, so this is the pivot that I like on space. Obviously never got there, but this is the area that I'm watching uh, for the next couple of days on space. Again, here comes the 235 weeklies. Uh, NNOX going nuts. Crowd to obviously take on the way up. Uh, XPV, new highs. Uh, FSLY. FSLY didn't do anything. Uh, FSLY, the volume was very thin. Uh, it went from 98 to like 98.50s. 
and then completely reverse course. Uh, and I even actually talked about this on the feed. And I said, look, it's stalling out, consider break even. And again, guys, the one thing that we can see very, very quickly, especially at the whole numbers, it's incredibly important to recognize if a stock doesn't go right away within the first minute or so, especially on a whole number pivot, consider using break even as you stop. That means, again, there just wasn't enough uh, there wasn't enough volume coming in on that break. And again, this is why we always, uh, you know, always talk about if it stalls out, again, consider using break even as you stop. Uh, Netflix went absolutely nuts into the close. Uh, 513.75, 514 needs to build. Uh, here was Netflix, right? Here was Netflix, just went out of its mind. Uh, so here's the whole, took out the 514 and closed right to the 521, uh, 522 level. Again, these stocks look really, really strong uh, for tomorrow. Beyond, 172 needs to build. Again, not a huge move on Beyond, uh, but again, you know, took out the 172. I didn't realize it even went to 175. I know it went to 173 and a half, and I logged off. I must have put up an extra couple of dollars. Uh, so now, you know, again, you got a cash flow spike there. Uh, this one really didn't do anything. Uh, BNTX 80 needs to build. It only went up like 20 cents before it reversed course. Uh, and 520 is supply. So again, I, I think going into tomorrow, uh, we're definitely buy biased. Okay, um, I, I would love to see. Uh, a gap down open. Again, whether it's small or large, it doesn't make a difference. But again, we're getting so many good value setups for tomorrow that if we do confirm, uh, especially Thursday's price action, I think we can have a pretty premium uh, day. So guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.